chilly will tell the cries of the tortured men. Remember a lending in the days before, before the army came. Please remember Victor Hara in the Santiago Stadium. Hiya! Penguin Truth here, and on this episode of Otaku Evolution, we return to Osama Dezaki's Blackjack OVA. Ah, Osama Dezaki, the king of pastel freeze frames. The late great director got his start under Osamu Tezuka at Mushi Production, and later co-founded Studio Madhouse. He's adapted works by Asao Takamori, Ryoko Ikeda, and Buichi Terasawa, and has also done work for Loop on the Third, Gogo 13, and today's subject, the indomitable internist, Blackjack. Now, on previous episodes, I reviewed some of Dezaki's Blackjack. The movie, for instance, and the first two episodes of this OVA I return to here. So I have a pretty good feel for the character and feel a sense of comfort by his presence. After all, he's a doctor. Well, his bedside manner is a mixed bag, but you could do worse. The first of these two episodes, episode three, concerns the United St- Oh, sorry. The Federal Unites. Spreading peace and democracy the usual way by invading the Mexazuela Agua Expi the Republic of Ortega. After freedoming the shit out of his home, the troops captured General Cruz, the country's leader. The Amer- Uh, Federal Unitian President allays controversy over his invade first, reason later philosophy by accusing Cruz of being corrupt and trafficking narcotics over the border, and I don't think they're sending us their best people. Cruz isn't doing so well on lockup, though, apparently suffering some kind of attack. Meanwhile, at Niagara Falls... Niagara Falls! Slowly I turned, and step by step, inch by inch, I walked up to him and I smashed him. I hit him. I popped him. I hit him. I turned the faces and I knocked him down. Oh! No, oh, take it easy, boy. Take it easy. Uh, but anyway, at Niagara Falls... Like I said, at the falls of a certain name and place, Blackjack meets with a woman, Maria, who tells him that the patient he is to help is to be revealed later, but gives him his money and instructs him to meet her at a designated hotel in a week so that she could take him to the patient. The convoy transporting Cruz to another facility is attacked by Ortegan soldiers who extract him from their custody. This doesn't sit well with the president who needs Ortega to stand trial. When Blackjack meets with Maria a week later, she isn't shy about showing all the battle scars she's collected in Ortega's fight for independence. She explains that General Cruz, who we later discover is her father, has been diagnosed with terminal cancer, and the care he is to give is merely palliative until he can cross the border and die in his country, among his people. Apparently, there's a lot of forestry at the southern border of totally not America, because that's where Blackjack meets Cruz. Without x-rays or endoscopes, an exact prognosis is impossible, but I've reached some basic conclusions. Though the general is pretending otherwise for the sake of his followers, The disease is ravaging his system. At night, after a little gratuitous nude swimming, Maria enters the good doctor's tent to, uh, test his thermometer. Before she can get started, she jaws on about how she lives life to the fullest, and how the Federal Unites just wants Ortega's oil, and will use the bullshit drug narrative as a cover for imperialism. You know, pillow talk. But blackjacks come down with a bad case of not giving a fuck, So I guess he, uh, doesn't inject her with 10 cc's of blackajack. Blackulate ejaculate? He doesn't bang her. Well, it doesn't take the Federal Unites long to catch on to where they are and what they're doing. And so an elite task force is sent to recapture crews and kill everyone else. They use the standard stealth tactics. Black 
Jack and Maria flee the scene with the ailing General Cruz, and they rendezvous with the remaining Ortegan troops at a waterfall, where Blackjack has no choice but to operate on his patient entirely by the light of the moon. It's a makeshift setup, but he's Blackjack, damn it! This guy operated on himself while surrounded by bloodthirsty dingoes. He created a little girl out of a tumor! This is a cakewalk in comparison. As Blackjack removes the cancerous lesion from the general's thyroid gland, the Amer- uh, Federal Unitian troops close in and the fighting resumes. This time, they're not messing around. They kill mostly everyone, and once again Blackjack and Maria flee with Cruz. President Blandy is presented with a fake Cruz they can use for his show trial, with the excuse that he's just completely messed up by his own drugs. Because of this, the order to capture Cruz is changed to kill him, as they can't leave him alive to contradict them. An attack helicopter pursues Maria's vehicle until she's had enough and foolishly gets out to fight it herself. This ends about as well as you'd think. It isn't right. They are all waiting at the village church. I was a little girl once. <laughs> hmm. Being riddled by bullets from a helicopter and passing on in Blackjack's arms. Is anyone else getting flashbacks from the Blackjack movie? Actually, I'm also getting flashbacks from Gogo 13 Queen Bee. Maria is basically a tan queen bee, but without all the children or rape as backstory. In another world, perhaps they could have been allies. Gorillas fighting together for freedom in this steamy, savage jungle. Ooh, and maybe, you know, they get so hot they have to take off their shirts and... <coughs> uh, but anyway... Blackjack carries General Cruz to the border, but near the fence they encountered Federal Unite's forces. The general reveals that he's rigged with explosives and makes his way to the boundary. Blackjack holds a gun to the suit's head, but the guy calls his bluff and orders his men to fire. And unfortunately, the only part of Cruz that makes it home is any body part that flew over. Blackjack is totally pissed off, rightfully so, and moves to the planned meeting spot. Of course, nobody shows up because they're all fucking dead. So, yeah, I guess Samara, I mean, the Federal Unites wins, and probably takes over Ortega and its oil fields. The end. <coughs> anyway, on a lighter note, anorexia. See, somehow I can't feel sorry for an anorexic, you know? Rich cunt, don't wanna eat? Fucker. Ooh, George, no, buddy. That's the wrong attitude to take. Anorexia is more about an underlying psychological problem with distorted body image, or may, as in this following episode's case, actually be caused by a different underlying physical disease, such as... Go fuck yourself. <sighs> Fair enough. The patient in episode 4's case is an actress named Michelle, who had previously starred only in, uh, films you buy behind a curtain. At first it seems like the stress of going legit for a big film project is too much for her, as she's been wasting away, unable to keep food down. When Dr. Blackjack is called in, he believes there could be a tumor on her digestive tract. He runs a battery of tests on her at a hospital, but finds no sign of one. Even when it seems like she might be recovering, she just can't seem to eat anything. One night she gets fed up with it and goes driving off to visit an old childhood friend's grave, but has an accident. When she comes to, she's in the company of a strange wandering man, Dr. Kiriko, Blackjack's rival. Dr. Kiriko is an expert in assisted suicide for hopeless patients. Blackjack dislikes him because he considers assisted suicide immoral, thinking it's giving up on a patient. But Kiriko argues that he merely wants people to die with some dignity. Kiriko plies his trade euthanizing willing patients as they listen to classical music. It looks a bit like this. <music> Dr. 
After Kiriko lets Blackjack take Michelle back to the home of her caretaker, where he notices a series of sores that have appeared all over her body. Surprisingly, the director of the film she was in, who came with her agent, knows something about the symptoms she was showing. I was told your sister died of pneumonia. My parents were worried about being shunned by their neighbors. It was, after all, a very strange sort of death. To be unable to eat, to become wasted away like a dead tree. Blackjack is determined to check out the area Michelle used to live and play with her friend at himself to search for an environmental factor. On his way, Dr. Kiriko stops him with an important insight found in an old book. None of our examinations uncovered any form of tapeworm or bacteria in Michelle's system. I have one more interesting fact I'd like to present to you, Doctor. Not far from Anji, here, there are the ruins of a military explosives warehouse. But the truth is, the warehouse was actually built as a permanent storage site for bacterial weapons. Well, turns out Michelle and her friend Katina used to play at an abandoned biological weapons testing lab, which Michelle had recently revisited to reminisce. Blackjack puts the remains to the flame, and then examines the brain of one of the dead rats he took from the scene. After Michelle admits that when she last went there she was bitten, Blackjack is sure he knows what the problem is and begins surgery. Echinococcus parasite has infested the appetite central nervous system in her limbic system. There are rarely reports of parasites entering the brain. It was probably developed as a biological weapon and engineered to pass easily through the blood-brain barrier. If I could find the parasite and remove it, Michelle's problem would be solved. Eventually, our mysterious medic, our phenomenal physician, our pirate practitioner, discovers the parasite and removes it from nerve tissue. Apparently, it had a mimic gene that allowed it to camouflage as just another bit of tissue. After Michelle recovers, she resumes her role in the film, which later on Blackjack and Pinocchio, his child bro- I mean, daughter figure, go see in the theater. But it's not to the good doctor's tastes, I guess. And that brings us to the end of two more episodes of the Blackjack OVA. It's interesting how in some ways it could be so grounded and realistic, but also be complete bullshit at the same time. It's that the bullshit occasionally sounds somewhat plausible that I think is the charm. And Blackjack certainly shows more emotion than Gogo ever has. It's too bad Dazaki isn't still with us. I would have loved to have seen more Blackjack from him. Well, that's it for this episode. I'm not entirely sure what I'll be covering next, but I'll try to find something a little more substantial than this was. Until then, see ya! Your time, why don't you lie down? Oh, you. Look, what do you got? Just stay Niagara Falls in this guy. Niagara Falls! <laughs>